Should I pull this out? No, I got a page for you. Um, at one of the earlier lug meetings, I described my home phone system uh, inflicted on me by Clint, who recommended that I use an Astro server because it was so easy. And to review, uh, what I have is a voice over IP system. Each, each phone is a Linux box. Each of these phones that I got on eBay is a Linux box. I have desktops, which I supervise the system with. This is my, my uh, low-power appliance of choice. A uh, $15 on eBay runs uh, Arch Linux. Of course, I got the modem firewall cable thing going out to the end of the larger internet, and it connects to my uh, phone SIP broker, Vitality. So that's the that's the position. And uh, I had a uh, I had the uh, I guess the original presentation I gave was on caller ID because it, I you know. So I had a uh, number of utility programs on the uh, on the uh, Asterisk server, or on the Asterisk server box. I had Asterisk itself. I had the Asterisk gateway interface, a Python script, which uh, would would uh, intercept incoming calls and look at the uh, number field and look it up in a NoSQL database and uh, make that number available to uh, or would, would rewrite the uh, SIP uh, header and, and substitute in the caller name. And then I had a program that ran on, uh, on a, the desktop, caller ID, where I would enter caller ID and it would either look up the last number called and allow me to enter a name and so on because I didn't want to pay for caller ID. You know, you got to pay $5 a month. Geez, that's, that's outrageous. Sure. So uh, uh, I, got, I began to get spam calls, especially when you turn 65. I don't know, your number goes into some database, and they apparently decide that you can no longer make rational decisions about buying stuff, and so you begin to get these spam phone calls. And uh, so I decided that I'm going to take action, and uh, I decided the, the way I did, did it was it was pretty trivial in, in terms of the... Uh, the uh, program which, the, which uh, added on and rewrote the numbers that came into Asterisk, I, I had a routine already, normalized phone number, which would take the phone number in any form, because it came in all kind of different forms on the caller ID, and I had to kind of wing it or use a kind of a heuristic to get them into a normalized, phone, a normalized number, you know, the area code, the, uh, the uh, whatever it is, the office number and then the, the uh, number that of the individual caller. And so what I, what I used to do is if I couldn't normalize the phone number, I would return none. Now I would, uh, now what I did was if I can't normalize the phone number, oh, the, re the reason I had to do this is because a lot of these spam callers would use in the caller ID anonymous or unlisted or not available or something like that. And so if I couldn't build it into a phone number, I would return none. And so what I did was if I had none, if, I, if the function returned none, I would substitute the special number, 111, 1111, 111, okay? Which is, as far as I know, nobody has that phone number in the United States. Why didn't I use 000, 000, 000, 000, 000? Because that was already in use for something else that I was, but that's another story. Then on the desktop, I ran CID set 1111 and set the caller name to spam. So if I ever get an anonymous phone call, it sets the caller ID name to spam. Then on the asterisk dial plan, I added exactly two lines. This, and and no, notice how clear this and beautiful this, this uh, asterisk uh, language is. Uh, I, can't even, I can't even make heads or tails of it now, but if the caller ID name is spam, Apparently, I go to some label spam. Now, where is the label spam? Well, it's embedded inside this statement here. That's the clarity and beautiful, wonderful uh, syntax of this, the, uh, the uh, asterisk dial plan. All right, sure. So I got two bugs that I have not yet resolved. First bug is that uh, 
what do I do when the, when the phone call comes in? Well, what I initially did was I just dropped the call. You saw it in the dial plan. I would just drop the call. And Fidelity, I mean, Vitality didn't like that. That apparently violates the SIP protocol. And they would send me an email that said something is screwed up. Somebody called you and you hung up on them or terminated the call in an irregular fashion. And so uh, everybody else, you know, I tried to figure out how everybody else does that. And everybody else, they'll answer the phone and say, uh, press one if, you really have, if you're not an asshole, okay? And, uh, or, you know, something like that. If, I'm, if you're not a, if you're not a uh, marketer, press one. Or they'll give them eternal music on hold if they know it's a spam call. Or they'll, you know, that kind of thing. Monkey noises. If you, if Asterix actually provides a monkey noise recording that you can play if you want to tee somebody off. And most of, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the Lenny extension. Google it. I mean, or look it up on YouTube. The Lenny uh, asterisk extension or something like that. Unbelievable. I don't know how they do it. It's, it's some actor that uh, well, can, has actually kept people on the phone for an hour and a half with just a totally automated response system. It's just, and it's, a, it's not even an automated response system. It's just waits for silence, and it reads the next line in the script. And some of them are hilarious. It's great. You've got to listen to them. Now, unfortunately, that solution didn't work for me. I couldn't answer the phone because I, ha I paid 0.12 cents per answer of the call just to hang up. And, and, the print, and it's not very much money, but the principle just of the thing, just I, I can't stand it. So uh, Vitelli sent me an email, and the, f and the fix I came up with was make it a feature. In other words, I'll actually divert those emails because I can easily filter them with Thunderbird into a special directory. And uh, then I've written some Python scripts to analyze that the files in that directory. Let's hit the next one. Um, and the results are something like this. I have 100 spam, or at least as of about a month ago when I was originally going to give this presentation, I have about 100 spam records and 120 non-spam records. In other words, people that I know who I want to know who they are when they call me so actually legit, legitimate records in my database. So it's about a one-to-one -one ratio. After two months of running the thing, I, I looked at it, and the number of calls dropped from about 10 a week, you know, two a day, to one a week. Eh, that's considerably better, but it's still not great. I, st I still see occasional spurts from, to f from five to 10 a week of, of, of calls that I drop. In other words, I, they come in, I don't ever see them, but I drop them. Uh, I have, 100, I, I have a total of, as of last month, 142 block calls from 34 different offenders. And if I hadn't been doing this, I would have gotten 1,400 calls because I wouldn't have had this 10 to 1 drop, okay? So it's, it's been fairly effective. Half the block calls are from four offenders. Rachel from Card Member Services. Does anybody else get those? Really? They're, you're over 65, though, right? No. Not yet? Rick Scott, vote Republican, okay, and they, I, I don't know, I don't know why they call me, okay. And you've won a vacation cruise or a hotel stay or something like that, and they, it's basically as far as I can tell, I've never actually took it, taken them up on it, but I think it's a uh, timeshare sales high pressure scheme of some kind. And hello, seniors, you've you've qualified for a free alarm system. Everybody, anybody get that call with me? Okay. Really? Okay. Well, you're not even. What a, Yeah, well, they must have a database of your ages because to me it's hello senior, okay, or hello seniors. Go. Okay, uh, the other problem, yes? I just got called today by uh, Microsoft Tech Support. Oh, yeah, I get those, but those aren't, those aren't the top four. I get those, but they're not the top four, and they often have a different number each time, so I can't block them as effectively. <clears throat> so my other bug is I always get the first call when I have to enter them into the database, and I, that, that annoys me. And so I thought, well, maybe there's a way to round that. Well, there's a, you know, MrNumber.com, I don't know if you remember them, but they, well, uh, you may use it on your mobile phone, but they took away the API from us, us people, us old people that still use landlines, okay? Uh, everybody else but me uses a cell phone, but I still use a landline. They were acquired by white pages and promptly turned the API off that you used to be able to, used to be able to fetch information or a spam score. <clears throat> True Caller had a, had a uh, similar crowdsourced API, you know, where the, you could you could say that this flagged. I don't know if I, I don't know if I tried that or not. They wanted too much information, and I didn't want to give it to them. 
Nomo Robo, I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Nomo Robo is a, uh, won the contest of the FCC for the uh, automated spam in, uh, eliminating method. And what they did is if you had a voice over IP phone, you could program your voice over IP phone to ring, ring you and ring them simultaneously. If they decided, for whatever reason, it was spam, they would answer after the first ring and then tell them to go fish, okay? And uh, they used statistics. In other words, they had all these statistics coming in, all these calls coming in from all over the country, and they could tell if, if somebody's making 100 calls an hour, it's probably not your friend from down the street. And so I called up, or I didn't call up Mr. M Mr. Nomo Robo, but I emailed him. And he, he meant, because on a Reddit post somewhere, he mentioned they were making a RESTful API. Well, hell, I can handle that, you know. So I, he wrote me back and he said, well, it's only $300 a month, and, and would that fit into my business plan? No, <laughs> it would not. Um, Callcap.com is another blacklist that has 1,400 spam numbers, but none of the, my top offenders were on that list. So it didn't work. That's all I have. Uh, I still haven't fixed, resolved this bug. Any questions? <laughs> That's it.